Hey y'all. I just wanted to make a quick video tonight. Um, kind of showing you my process for the initial head mounting process. Um, I recently got that big box of attack heads, which if you haven't seen, I will link up in, um, I will link down in the doobly doo and there'll be a link up there. Uh, the single cl a single ply clear on the bottom and a double ply coated on top. This is my 14 inch floor tom and let's run through it really quick. So the first thing I do, I used to use just um, candle paraffin wax a few years ago. Um, the drum dial people came out with a bearing edge conditioner and I don't do this all the time. I tend to do it, you know, um, I just did a, a really big clean on the drums. And it feels like now is a good time to do it. This one especially is super soft. I don't know if you can see that really well. Right? So it's, it's like an extra soft, like, chapstick for your drums, pretty much. And once I've gone around, I don't know if you can see, there's a little extra hanging out there. So I'll rub some of the extra in and get a little rough spot right there. So I'm going to try and get a little more in there. But you're just trying to create, this is a, everything I do, some people are going to say, no, that's not the right way to do it. There, there are as many ways to uh, tune drums and mount heads as there are people. <laughs> so, um, so this is totally just my way. Um, certain things I'm set in my ways about certain things I think are the best. So, so we got our wax coating on. This is the top head. Usually I do the bottom first, but I waxed the top hoop. So let's do the top head first. I like to have my logo where the badge is, uh, which is totally an OCD thing. You can there. There's one school of thought that says you want to spin the head and find like the um, the point of where it lays flattest. I have rarely found that to be like a super issue with heads, so I don't worry about it too much. So this is the drum set that I won last year um, at, for for um, winning the Hit Like a Girl contest. And the toms all came with 2.3 millimeter hoops. Uh, as part of this change, I upgraded the floor toms to 3.0 millimeter hoops. Um, on the floor toms, I feel like the little bit heavier hoop gives it a little bit more focused sound. And on the floor tom especially, I I want that a little bit more focused because if the if the floor tom just like you know floor toms are complicated, right? We want them to kind of ring and be boomy and and doomy, and then as soon as we go to record them, we start putting all sorts of moon gel and tape and everything on them to to control all that, right? So um, one of the ways that I've found to kind of ride that happy medium is with a little bit heavier hoop that helps to to keep the the edges of the sound a little bit more focused, right? You don't get quite so much of that, the wild tone um, ringing. Okay, this is going to be very boring. I'm going to try and talk while I do this a little bit. So what I've got is, there you go. I think you can actually see that. So this is a uh, finish line. It's dry bike lubricant. It's a, it's just a Teflon loop. And I just take the, that and do like a little coating on the tension rods. You can use three in one oil. I've also, I, for a long time, I was using, um, yep, sewing machine engine oil, um, which is a very clean oil. When I was younger in drum corps, we would use Vaseline, um, and Vaseline gets gunky, right, and builds up and the next time you go to either change the heads or especially if, you know, you do a couple coats of Vaseline between a major cleaning, 
then then the head the it's just super gunky and gross. So um, you want to you want a clean oil. There's this is one of those counterintuitive things that lubricating the tension rods actually helps them to hold their tuning a little bit better, um, which is it's like a physics thing, right? I um, I don't I don't really care too much about the why. <laughs> I believe that there is a why, and I believe it, but I don't care all that much about it. Um, so, the other thing is it makes tuning easier. So, it's it's helpful on the top end because it makes the tuning of the drums easier. And then, it also helps them to hold their tuning. I'm probably just going to show you the top head. You don't need to see the whole the whole Nagilla. It's the same for the bottom head. But I figured I hadn't I haven't done this exact type thing. So soon I will do um, I'll probably do a video. This is this is late at night and I'm about to go to bed when I'm done putting the heads on or shortly after I have to edit another video. but. Besides that, I'm going to go to bed um, after doing this. So mostly I'm putting the heads on just to let them sit overnight. Um, one of the nice things about attack heads with that, um, with that crimped hoop, right? The, the head is like kind of encased in metal at the hoop. Um, the, the seating thing isn't, isn't, um, isn't exactly the same thing to worry about as it is with other brands of heads. So I'm not really worried so much about the hoop or the head um, loosening in the hoop overnight. More so, I just think it's nice to have the head kind of conform to that, to the um, bearing edge just a little bit. It's, it's a really minor thing and this is probably one of those like old habits die hard things. Um, all right, we're almost done with the tension rods. Two more after this. And I just throw them in finger tight, right? Which especially right after um, getting the lubricant is super easy. And there's definitely not a method to my madness with the with the loop. I just put on what looks right. Um, pretty much trying not to drip it on the floor or on my leg. Um, but I'm trying to get a good coating. The nice thing about the Teflon lube is that it's really. I shouldn't say this, especially right at, right before I'm going to do one more on camera. <laughs> um, it's pretty difficult to make a mess with this stuff. That is. A big problem, right? Okay. So this is my, like I say, my 14-inch floor tom. So we've got eight lugs. I'm gonna go around and do a little bit, a little bit more finger tight, just kind of get them even-ish, right? I have a, I have a tuning style, and this is, you know, because I'm old, and so when I was originally tuning. They weren't drum dials or tune bots or anything like that. We just always did it by ear. And so I do it by ear. I also kind of do it by feel. I'm going to take you through the top head just a little bit. Usually I would put on the bottom head too, but I don't want to make you sit through watching me put on two heads. I'll give you an idea of the process. I literally just watched a video that said how terrible the star tuning method is. <laughs> And here I go. So, so the as opposed to the star method, um, the the latest, like the right way to do it nowadays, seems to be two drum keys at a time. Oh, I'm sorry. And you do this, and then you go crisscross, and then you pick one of these, and then you do one of those. And that's neat and all. Um, this totally could be me being set in my ways and just deciding to do it the way I know how to do it. Um, I've tried that a few times. I don't super like it. And 
I'm reasonably happy with my tuning results. So I'm going to keep doing it the way I do it. So I pick one and I'll usually leave my left hand where I start. Um, just as you know, I usually do a pretty, pretty good job of remembering where I started, but I want to have a sense, right? That I'm, that I'm bringing everything up even. And I'm, like I say, I'm doing it super by feel at first. I'm trying to maintain an even tension. And one of the things that I've noticed with the TuneBot is it's totally possible to have two, you know, two spots be the same pitch, but actually the head is like crooked. And so the head isn't evenly pitched, even though the the tension rods are ringing the same pitch which is that's actually a thing i think the tune bot has helped me kind of um at least be aware of right this is still this is still pretty loose so so i go around a couple times and i'm you know some i'm gonna go more and some i'm gonna go less it's totally a feel thing like i say at first i haven't I haven't tapped around to see how I'm doing pitch wise. This actually feels like it's like it's um, tuning up pretty well. Right? And I'm trying to notice where so these are higher and that's lower, right? So I'm gonna go in there and I don't I try and find patches, right? That one's still higher, right? So it feels like this band. This one's still a little lower than I'd like it, but the head is higher than I want it for, for, you know, this is my first floor tom, right? You can hear it's a little, it's a little, it doesn't have the bottom head, so it's going to sound a little flat. But um, it's a little tighter than I want it final tuned, but at this point I'm, I'm trying to get it really close, and then when I come back for that final tune, when I bring it down, that's when I will get super um, focused on making sure it's even. And that one's a little high, that one's a little low. Right. Yeah, it's it's close. Um, like I said, I just watched a video on a drum dial, which I've never used, although I um, I find the concept fascinating. And um, it was interesting how with the if you don't know how a drum dial works, it sort of has like a little needle and it. put It's a weight that rests on the head and then it, the needle kind of measures how much the head is deforming. And so you're getting a measure of the tension of the head. And he was able to get like exactly the right pitches all the way around the drummer. It was really remarkable, um, or exactly even. Um, and then I was reading a follow-on article about how you have to be really careful about that other thing I was talking about uh, about how you know you can end up with similar tension, but if the head is like if the hoop is crooked, right, which is a danger with me because I just said this is a heavier hoop and heavier is is a little stiffer and isn't going to deform as much as you tune. So you just have to be careful. Um, like I say, this is just my initial kind of, hey, my head is on my drum now um, setup, and I wanted to run you guys through that. Um, we'll, do, we'll do some more in-depth tuning videos to come. Um, all right.
I will see you guys all again real soon. This is... Um, yeah. Um, I hope you're all well. Take it easy. Bye.